Continuing on from last week, we have a few more thoughts to share from the tech stars at Pivotal. Today with Melind. Twitter. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Think Big Analytics. Ron Botkin. And Matt Barr. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. But what they think is in store for big data. So grab your brew and enjoy. What's the most exciting things that coming up? You know, I mean, as a as a um, visionary that looks into the future, uh, anything on the horizon that you're really excited about? I mean, Storm isn't really the, the latest greatest thing anymore. You know, right, right, right. come on, everybody's. Yeah, yeah. But what's the what's the next thing beyond that? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, in the in the in the short term, and when when we launched this whole uh, Pivotal HD, right? Uh, one one of our visions has always been that you get a buffet of computing frameworks mm-hmm. to run on the same data yeah. right and that's the reason that we want to acu- accumulate all this data in hdfs whether it is hawk native data or hawk uh, 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 trying to access data from age base or whatever right uh, so why just be limited to that because of yarn now we can have something like graph lab which specializes in graph model and graph analytics mm-hmm have the have access to the same compute resource and the same data on on uh, on top of a same hadoop cluster mm-hmm. right so uh, graph lab is the recent one that we added uh, but in order to run graph lab graph lab runtime is actually open mpi mm-hmm. so open mpi has been in use in high performance right. computing for a long time so what we managed to do is uh, make yarn as the resource manager for open mpi oh cool yeah so so that now we'll be open sourcing it soon and i've been saying it soon for a long time now so well yeah. you've broken a but small startup there's only one lawyer that <laughs> has to look at the paperwork right <laughs> right exactly <laughs> Exactly, so so that's that's the project that we call as hamster. So hamster runs on, runs on top of There's HDFS. There's a whole zoo of animals here. Exactly, and <laughs> again, hamster is. Uh, I, I can't take full credit for hamster, yeah. but I can take credit for the name. Okay, it stands for Hadoop and MPI on the same cluster. Oh, nice. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll basically see a, a lot of these specialized runtime system mm-hmm. for specialized. Machine learning algorithms, or or any time your uh, mm-hmm. communication uh, pattern changes, uh, that's that's what you are going to have, right? And and all all of them sharing the same data. So I, the the big vision is to leave the data in one space yeah. and then move the you said the buffet of tools right. to the data. Exactly. Where what we did traditionally, like you know, the last thirty years or so, we moved the data into oh, yes. the specialized environments. And now right. we move the specialized environments to the data. That's right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <coughs> and and so uh, although the data as in just a byte stream is there in mm-hmm. HDFS files. Uh, we actually need to impose some structure through input record, input mm-hmm. format, and record readers and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. So really, edge catalog is actually a great step uh, mm-hmm. in going towards that mm-hmm. because it actually associates uh, a, a particular record structure with any arbitrary data set that mm-hmm. both MapReduce as well as Hive as well as Pig, all of them can use mm-hmm. then simultaneously, oh, right? Or Hawk. Uh, Exactly. That's the thing. <laughs> That's where I was going. Is that we basically take make uh, use of something that we built called uh, uh, Pivotal Extension Framework, mm-hmm. uh, which essentially is a, a translation layer between these outside data sources, mm-hmm. outside as in not in our native uh, uh, format, yeah. okay, and and uh, make it accessible uh, to all our different products or all our different components that are running on top of uh, Hadoop. Mm-hmm. Um, and one more thing that I'm, I'm recent recent happening that I'm really proud of is basically we introduced the support for uh, Parquet mm-hmm. uh, as a native uh, table type uh, okay. in Hawk. Oh, okay. So you can basically when you do a create table, you basically you say create Parquet table data. type equals Parquet. Yeah. Right. And now it's a it's a completely open format, mm-hmm. and Twitter and Cloudera have done a lot of work on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the reason we we went with Parquet. Is because it is accessible both from Java as well as C plus okay. plus or C. Yeah. So since Hawk is written C++ in C, C, so basically that gets into the native access for Parquet. Mm-hmm. But the same files are then available via Parquet uh, uh, input format for the rest of the ecosystem. If you look into the future, what's next? Um, yeah, I think it's a good question. Um, I don't know. Drinking more beer. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking more beer. So I'm, I'm really excited about people getting good at programming large, like uh, large numbers of computers. And I think yeah. that we're still kind of figuring. We're still in early days. I mean, three yeah. years ago, people like people weren't very good. So I, I like I think that that's like a big deal. Like, I'm 
I'm real. I'm, I'm much more knowledgeable about about uh, like probability theory than statistics. So mm -hmm. if you don't really know much about statistics, you're always like, oh, those two sound, things sound, sound like the mm -hmm. same thing. So I've only recently at Twitter really been getting more into machine learning. Mm -hmm. But one observation I have is someone who really cares about. Um, about like uh, abstractions is that machine learning doesn't seem like we're to the point where we're really programming with machine learning. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to see that happen. I'd like to be somehow a part of that where like right now, if you want to like make a new model, mm -hmm. like you just, okay, I guess I'll reuse all this code, but I'm going to start from zero. I'm going to build the model. I, I heard from somebody that right. this like, I should use logistic regression and maybe right. I should use these features, right. but you don't have any libraries. Right. Imagine like you were, you learned a lot after mm -hmm. you were born. I imagine mm -hmm. you seem quite clever, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you have all these circuits that came that most humans came with. Right. So we're not doing any of that that I can really see on a large scale with machine learning. Yeah. Where I can go, you've got some great featureization mm -hmm. libraries. I'd like to use your featureization libraries and then add some more features. Yeah. And like share, right. like how do we featureize? Right. And then like you've already trained this model that can featureize a lot, can produce these very highly refined features. Mm -hmm. And now I want to take those and plug those into my next thing. Right. I don't see us doing that yet. So but when we start doing that, I think recommendation systems can get really, really, really good. Hmm. Great, and I think recommendations, uh, recommendation system are the future. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely like. Uh, absolutely interesting. So, Ron, you have a really good perspective, kind of um, flying above all those different vendors and companies, um, and a lot of experience with diverse customers. Said, where is this all going in five to ten years? Where will we be? No, that's a great question. You know, from from our perspective, um, we're in early stages of the journey mm -hmm. towards big data, and you know the whole industry will come along, and the economy is going to really change in meaningful ways as more companies become data driven. As you get startups that are are using big data as a weapon to change value chains, right? So mm -hmm. I think over time, what you're going to see is that um, that the, the data platform, the analytics platform, will be integrated into drive strategic outcomes in many companies, mm -hmm. right? That they're gonna use data science as a fundamental way of both thinking about strategy, how to resolve, you know, how do you come up with experiments to test and learn about what's going to work and, and as well as process execution. Mm -hmm. Having the right data, breaking down silos in front of people that are acting in a process and the right level of automation to drive response as events come in that you can use machine learned models that are continuously being improved. From, a, from, from the technology standpoint, I think that's gonna mean you're gonna have um, rich platforms based on open source that are used for both real-time response and for the analytic core, mm -hmm. you're gonna to continue to have evolution. I mean, one of the things that's gonna be an interesting X factor that will hit over the next five, 10 years is changing storage dynamics. Mm -hmm. You know, as you, you start to see things like solid state memory that that uh, retain that, that functions a lot like DRAM, but right. retains data when power is off, right? Yeah. So use of more solid state storage along with spinning disks is gonna be really interesting. E even smaller things like the fact that Increasingly, really large disks are not being designed to have access to data be as easy, right? That they're being designed in complex ways that are not as efficient. So you're getting some bifurcation and even in spinning disk. Um, so you know, I think I think the the changes in the underlying architecture are going to be interesting. And you know, in a space where you've got just massive innovation, I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of different ideas flourish around you know, virtualization and OpenStack and cloud. And I, I think that you'll see more big data capabilities moving to the cloud over the next few years that there'll be, uh, that, that some of the current challenges and limitations in cloud will be, will be resolved. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the current cultural disadvantages of cloud, skepticism about cloud will be mitigated. Um, just like you know, ten years ago, to, to say you'd put customer data in the cloud would be considered heresy, and now Salesforce.com is ubiquitous. Multi-billion right? dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that that's another trend you're going to see is is definitely uh, a lot of factors converging. But what won't change? What's what's clear is that it's going to take a while because there's a lot to learn about really driving innovation and changing culture mm -hmm. to deliver value from big data. But that over the next decade, it's going to have probably a bigger impact on economic growth than the wave of client server computing and, and workflow automation had in the 90s. Wow. So I think it's gonna create a tremendous amount of value for humankind. 
So, and, and what's in the future for, for you, for MapR, for the Hadoop uh, ecosystem, what do you think? What do I think? Well, I think if you look at the, uh, the, the trends in the market, uh, IT spending is growing at about 2.5% mm -hmm. annually. Um, data is growing about, at about 40% annually, right? So that's, uh, there, there's a disruption there that has to happen, and Hadoop is that disruption, mm -hmm. right? You know, and MapR is the company that's kind of bringing Hadoop to uh, the enterprise and, and, and as well as the, techn the, the web companies uh, with a production-ready distribution. I think we're in a, we're in a great position to, uh, uh, to kind of fuel that disruption. And I, I think it's the biggest disruption really since the, uh, the relational databases uh, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah.